Hello and welcome to the Arkansas State University Dean B. Ellis Library video tutorial on literature reviews for nursing and allied health. Today we're going to tackle how to use A State Library resources to conduct a review of the literature for clinical research questions. And the first question you might have is what is a literature review? A lit review is a systematic synthesis of previous work around a topic. But what does that mean in practical terms? Well, typically a literature review follows these steps. Pick a topic, pick a research question about that topic, and search different specialized and general databases for sources on your topic. You then need to analyze those sources and synthesize them into a coherent argument. In clinical terms, you need to find the evidence, examine the evidence, and put all the evidence together. Our main focus today is on finding the evidence. It's important to understand that these steps don't always flow easily from one to the next. Research is often a messy affair. That's okay and perfectly normal. Here are a few things that are likely to happen as you make your way through the research process. Your topic can and probably will change. You might have picked something too narrow or too broad, or maybe you just didn't find it interesting enough. Your research question can change. You may discover that you want to take a different approach. Maybe look at a different type of intervention or patient group. You will learn new things, and that in turn will affect your searches and the way you approach your research. You'll often discover a new term that you are unfamiliar with that you can now use to refine your search. And then finally, you will have to return to earlier steps in the process, sometimes jumping around and trying new things. This flowchart is a good illustration of the ways you might jump back and forth between different steps in the research process. You can see that these arrows sometimes return to previous steps in the process. This is because research and searching is an iterative process, meaning it goes through iterations or versions, with each new iteration becoming more and more fine-tuned and precise, and hopefully finding you better evidence. The first step in any literature review is to come up with a topic. It can be quite broad at this point. Just pick a topic of interest and start from there. What I like to do is conduct a few searches on my topic to get an idea of how I want to approach the topic and what kind of clinical question I want to ask. However, you might already have your topic narrowed down, in which case you'll still want to start searching the literature to find sources on your topic. The topic I've decided on is low back pain in pregnancy. Let's do a search to see if we can find some initial information to get the creative juices flowing. Okay, here we are at the library's homepage. Today I'm going to use a database called CINAHL to search the literature. But typically you would search several databases to make sure that you're conducting a thorough review of the literature. CINAHL is the premier database for nursing and allied health literature and is usually the best place to start. I'll provide a list of other relevant databases that you can search at the end of this tutorial. You can access all of our databases by following the Research Databases link. And you can see that we have several hundred different databases, but like I said, we're going to start with CINAHL. I'll click the C to navigate to the database. It's called CINAHL Complete. And then if you're off campus, you'll be prompted to enter your A-State username and password before you enter the database. Once you're in, you'll see the basic search bar. Later on, you'll, you'll see me advocating that you use the advanced search, and we'll get to that in a moment, but for now, we're going to stick with the basic search. And then my topic was low back pain during pregnancy. All right, let's take a look at our results. The idea with this initial search is to get the lay of the land, that is, to see what kind of research has been done so that I can start thinking about the kind of question I want to ask about my topic. And for me, this typically means scrolling through and seeing what I can find. Of course, many times you already have something more specific in mind, and that's wonderful if you do. But for now, we're pretending that we only have a broad topic, and we're looking for ideas about that topic. So I see something about acupuncture, something about risk factors for low back pain, 
coping strategies, physical activity, and a whole lot more. So I already have some ideas about some potential interventions to help with low back pain. I can now look at some specific articles and maybe read their abstracts so that I get a better idea of what the study design and the methods that were used are. And from there, again, I can begin to think about what kind of research question I want to ask until I've formulated a plan of attack for my research. Okay, so imagine I've done this for a while and I think that I have uh, fine-tuned my topic and I'm ready to ask a clinical research question. Now that I've done some initial searches and I think I have a research question, a common way for nurses to structure their literature reviews is to use the PICO method. And that means population or patient problem. So in my case, it's low back pain in pregnant women. Intervention, I've decided that I want to see what effect exercise can have on low back pain in pregnant women. A comparison, so that might be to another method, another intervention, or as I've chosen here, no treatment, so no exercise. And then the outcome, so P-I-C-O. Uh, in this case, to reduce or el even eliminate that low back pain. And then T is for time. This isn't always a factor, so sometimes it's just P-I-C-O, PICO, uh, but sometimes it is important. In our case, I would say it is. We're not really worried about relieving back pain after pregnancy is over, but rather during the pregnancy itself. So you see that PICO can help us structure our clinical question, and now we can go out and continue searching to further narrow our results and find more relevant results. Okay, back to searching. Okay, now we're back here at our initial set of results, and there are a number of search techniques that we can use to improve upon our results. But to, to take advantage of those, you really need to use the advanced search, because that allows you to put together a, a longer, more sophisticated search and structure it so that it executes properly and you find and, and maximize your relevant results. So one thing I'll do is I'll look for exact phrases. So if I enclose a phrase in quotation marks, I will find those exact words right beside each other, which will in turn make my phrase, my search more precise. I can also use the OR operator to expand my search and search for synonymous terms. So low back pain, you'll sometimes see it referenced as lower back pain. And previously we might have missed those. Um, and then let's do pregnancy again, and in our case, exercise. So now we have 166 results. That's not bad, but we could, again, improve upon this a little bit. So we might also, maybe in the course of my search, I found out that there was something called uh, lumbosacral pain, right? So we'll, we'll put that as well. I can also truncate search certain terms. So maybe I want the word pregnant as well as pregnancy. And in that case, I can append an asterisk so that it will find the variations on a particular word. This isn't just a, a throwaway trick. I use this in almost every search that I conduct. And we could probably also put something like physical activity, even though that's not a perfect synonym for exercise. It's close enough that I want to find literature that references physical activity as well as exercise. And so this should increase the number of results that we get. And now we're up to 190. We could continue to experiment with our search terms here so that we increase or decrease the number of results. We could add additional terms. One thing I might do is use the not operator to exclude the term labor. Because I'm concerned with lower back pain 
during the pregnancy, but not the back pain that's specific to childbirth or labor, uh, just for the purposes to illustrate this search. And what the not will do is exclude references to those particular terms. And it should reduce the number of results. And so we got rid of a few, about 17 results. So one thing I haven't done yet is set any kind of limits. And there are all sorts of limits that we can set. One that we might want to set right away is results only from academic journals and exclude things like dissertations, magazines, continuing education units, etc. Another common one is to only want research from the past five, ten years or something to that effect. So we might say, uh, we'll just say ten years. So I can change the date range and again that's going to further narrow my results. So now I'm down to under a hundred. And the truth is you don't want thousands of results. There's simply not enough time to sift through all of that and it probably means that your approach is, is too broad in scope. So realistically you want your result number of results to be in the hundreds or even the dozens. So this isn't a bad set here. And we could continue to uh, set several other types of limits, an age range perhaps, uh, etc. And if we actually click on advanced search again, we can return to the different limits here. And there are several that I know nurses often use, one of which is first author is a nurse. We can also set the type of uh, clinical query. We could only have randomized controlled trials. Sometimes you only want to search specifically nursing journals. So maybe I say only the core nursing journals or just nursing journals in general. All of those things can, again, further narrow and impact the number of results that you get. Because for the most part, we do want to narrow our results until we've um, happened upon a solid set of relevant results. Now here we've gone too far. We only have two results because of some limit that I, that I just set. So now it becomes a matter of analyzing these results so if I want access to the PDF of a particular article, I can follow that link. Sometimes you may come across an article that you're not able to immediately access, in which case you can use interlibrary loan. You can read about that and set up your account on the library's homepage. Other times you may see a link that says something like find full text at A-State, in which case it will go out to search our other databases to determine if we have access to it somewhere else. In this case, we would continue to follow the links until we located the article itself, or sometimes it will say no results found, and like I said, you can request it through interlibrary loan. But we will continue to analyze these results, read the abstracts, sometimes read the article itself, until you've selected all of the evidence that you want to use, positive, negative, or neutral, in your to answer your clinical question. Here are some other suggested research databases for nursing and al allied health professions. You can find all of these on the library's homepage at the Research Databases link. CINAHL, again, is probably the best place to start, but to be thorough in your literature review, you would want to search a variety of databases. If you need more help, you can contact me, Robert Robinette, via email, phone, or you can drop by my office at room 233 of the DMBLS library. You could also contact our main library there. And then we have a 24-7 chat support service that you can use day or night and get a very quick response. I hope you feel more confident conducting your own literature reviews now, but again, please don't hesitate to ask me for help.